Hey guys, just wanted to uh, do another quick video. I wanted to show you how I eyeball um, center on the uh, tool post uh, uh, carriage drilling operation here. Um, I set the uh, height um, pretty much the same way. Um, I actually did originally dial it in with a dial test indicator to get the height and the side to side. But honestly, every time I do this, I find that's not really necessary to be absolutely flawlessly perfect. I mean, it just seems like it's just pretty easy, honestly. So, I'm going to throw in my center drill. I'm going to try to do this as much as possible without getting in the way of the camera. Let's see here, we got a good view. Leave a little dimple. There we go. I'm going to leave the machine running just because then I can run the carriage back and not get in the way of the camera. Let's put this together today. It's a uh, Morse taper number two to Jacob's taper, taper number three. And I set it up for uh, set it up with a set screw so that it'll hold the, the quarter inch drill and I put a small flat on the drill. If there's any issues with the setup, it's more along the line of the drill not being quite perfect that way, but I think that's just built into the into the uh, Morse taper and the tool post itself. Um, the more taper uh, tool post holder, but honestly, it's doing an awfully good job. Um, that broke through. Now, this is a uh, hot roll steel, by the way. Nothing, nothing tough to tough to drill. And now, I just wanted to show you guys what I just did a little bit earlier, but I didn't catch it on video has a silly uh, video clip running so it uh, shut off on me I'll put this down to 300 oh, 280 there we go 280 rpm let's get some lube on there this is a 7 8 drill so I drilled with a quarter inch to clear the web and now I'm going to power feed this puppy and see what happens It's going to make a little noise as it gets all the way in. The web isn't supported right now. So it's going to vibrate a little bit and make a little bit of noise. There we go. Smooth right out. Now if you told me a week ago that I could do this with this lathe, I would have thought you were nuts. Honestly, I would have never dreamed that this thing would power drill a 7 inch drill after a quarter inch drill without squawking or making any kind of bracket or slipping or slipping a belt or anything. It's just punching right through. Honestly, I think it's a lot easier to control the chip load this way. It makes it easier to drill the hole because you don't have to worry about overtaxing anything. Very controlled. Now it's breaking through the back. Beautiful. Very non-violent. Okay, let's go ahead and stop it. I have no idea. I know this is not a 
proper way to measure a hole, but it would be nice to see how close we are. Yeah, we got 878 eight with a decent amount of pressure. So we're about three and a half thousand seven inch oversize. Yeah. Just can't see a problem with that. It seems like it did a really good job. Um, nice thing about this setup here. I can just tap the back of this drill and pop it right out. And then pop in, you know, a uh, chamfer tool. Take you off the stand here. Give you an idea of what size of piece I'm working on. Just a little stub, a little piece that I had hanging around. And uh, yeah, I'm actually not too um, upset about the surface finish either, honestly. It's a little bit better than when I do it by hand. Um, anyway, you guys have a great day. I'll back out here so you can see the, the whole lathe. It's the Precision Matthews 1030V. There's my tailstock. There's my quick change uh, tools. Yeah, I'm not been a big fan of this lathe, but it's grown on me, especially with it being able to do that. That's pretty cool.